Ilang grupo ng mga youth activist ang nagsagawa ng isang lightning rally sa loob mismo ng Asia Society sa New York na kung saan nakatakdang magsalita si Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Sa video na binahagi ng GMA News ay makikita ang ilang mga kabataan na humiga at sumigaw ng Never Again to Martial Law na paulit-ulit upang ipakita ang kanilang galit kay Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Agad naman silang pinaalis ng mga security personnel ng nasabing building. Matatandaan na mayroong mahigit apat na raang mga aktivista ang nagtipon sa Asia Society upang ipakita ang kanilang pagkondina kay Marcos. Binatikos din nila ang Asia Society dahil sa pagbibigay diumano ng pagkakataon kay Marcos na magsalita. Ayon pa sa balita ay si Lloydal Nicholas Lewis ang nasa likod ng ginagawang rally upang ipahiya si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos sa Amerika. Kilalang taga-suporta ni Lenny Robredo si Lloyd Lewis na isang mayamang negosyante na nakabase sa Amerika. Matatandaang kontra din ito sa nagdaang Duterte administration at kung ano-anong paninira na lamang ang ginagawa nito para pabagsakin si Pangulong Duterte. Subalit, bigo ito sa kanilang masamang plano. Heard to speak before this esteemed organization that is the Asia Society. I of course commend your efforts in providing a platform for dialogue and action and building bridges towards a common vision, a better future for us all. A shared vision creates a commonality of interest that enables collective action. During the Philippine presidential election last May, I was uh, given by our people a majority a mandate to lead a country of close to 110 million people. This represents a shared vision of strength through unity. I called for unity throughout that campaign, and I am humbled that my call for unity resonated with my fellow countrymen and echoed their desire for a better future. They rejected the politics of division, as I, during the campaign and up to now, said nothing to offend any of the other candidates. And I bring that message of unity to you today. In our place in the community of nations, I have always said that the Philippines shall continue to be a friend to all, an enemy to none. I will reiterate what I said during the inauguration. We will continue to be a good neighbor, always finding ways to collaborate with the end goal of mutually beneficial outcomes. If we agree, we will cooperate and we will work together. If we differ, we will negotiate until we reach an agreement. At the United Nations General Assembly, I spoke about the importance of dialogue and solidarity in the face of the many challenges and threats that we now have to deal with. This means exerting every possible effort to transcend our differences and commit to end conflict. We are compelled to do this despite the increasing geopolitical tensions and aggressive strategic competition that is transforming the global landscape. The United States certainly plays an important leadership role in fostering an environment of stability and peace, not just globally, but certainly in our region. We appreciate the recognition by the United States of the strategic importance of the Indo-Pacific area and its long-standing alliance with the Philippines in this regard. The special relationship between our two countries is indisputable, founded on a long history of diplomatic relations and historical and cultural linkages that existed before that formal linkage, that formal uh, partnership between the United States and the Philippines. The United States, after all, is our only treaty ally. We believe that our alliance is an important basis for substantial and sustainable Philippine-US cooperation in support of the Philippines' security and, so security and socio-economic development agenda. On the security front, we seek collaboration to effectively implement the framework of defense agreements while enabling the meaningful modernization of our armed forces and civilian law enforcement capabilities. As I clearly stated in my State of the Nation address, I will not preside over any process that will abandon even a square inch of territory of the Republic of the Philippines to any foreign power.
We know that we can count on the United States to uphold the international law-based order, freedom of navigation and overflight, and the sustainable use and development of maritime resources. But equally important, we look to the United States to promote peace, security, and prosperity. On our part, we will continue to work with China and other claimant states with the end in view of resolving the issues involving the West Philippine Sea through diplomacy and through dialogue. The Philippines' candidature for, the non, for a non-permanent seat in the UN Security Council for the term of 2027 to 2028 is premised on my country's long years of experience in building peace and forging new paths of cooperation. In this context, we are certainly concerned about rising tensions in the Taiwan Strait, just north of the Philippines. We urge all parties involved to exercise maximum restraint. Dialogue and diplomacy must prevail. We adhere to the One China policy and have consistently called for the peaceful resolution of the, their issues involving Taiwan. We understand that peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region are also linked to the situation in the Korean Peninsula. And we are ready to play a constructive role in advancing a peaceful and denuclearized Korean Peninsula through confidence-building measures amongst the various stakeholders. On Russia and Ukraine, the Philippines urges all parties to continue adopting a peaceful means to maintain international peace and security. The Philippines has voted in favor of the three UN General Assembly resolutions on Ukraine. And at this point, let me discuss the various dialogue mechanisms in the region. We will continue to work towards strengthening ASEAN particularly its dialogue partnerships with neighbors that uphold regional peace and security. We welcome the renewed engagement of the Quad along with the recent establishment of the AUKUS. These mechanisms should help prevent destabilizing actions in the region that go against international law. We think that these dialogue mechanisms and security arrangements should complement, not supplant, the ASEAN-centered regional security architecture that has been built over decades by the ASEAN and its member partners, as well as the existing network of bilateral security partnerships in the region. Now let me touch on the economic front. The U.S. remains a strategic trading and investment partner of the Philippines. American businesses, including Fortune 500 companies, have found a home in the Philippines. They recognize the Philippines as, a country, as a, our country for its business-friendly policies, a very competent workforce, and a network of economic zones. Let me uh, point out three reasons why the Philippines is a viable and smart investment destination. First, our macroeconomic strength and bright prospects. The Philippine economy expanded by 5.7% last year and by 7.8% in the first half of this year. Growth was broad-based, driven not only by government spending, but also by household consumption and investments, reinforced by consumer and business confidence. Second, we have enabling policies in place. Recently, investor-friendly laws were enacted, and my administration is determined to leverage these changing reforms that will enhance those efforts. Third, and perhaps the most important point, another strong asset that we have is our human capital. We boast of a young, educated, hardworking, English-speaking workforce that is among the best in the world. With the very young median age of 25.7 years old, the Philippines enjoys a demographic advantage from which investors can benefit. We would welcome capital investments from the U.S. And our priority sectors are agriculture, clean energy, particularly nuclear energy, health systems, information technology, and business process management, or ITBPM. 
digital connectivity and, and manufacturing, including the critical sectors of semiconductors, green metals, batteries for electric vehicles, and electric vehicles themselves. The Philippines looks forward to how the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework will support our efforts to promote resilient supply chains, health systems, infrastructure, as well as clean energy and decarbonization. These pillars are consistent with the shared priorities as outlined in a joint vision statement for a 21st century United States-Philippines partnership that was adopted last November. We hope for the reauthorization of the Generalized System of Preferences, or GSP program, which will greatly benefit both our countries. The GOP, GSP has long been a win-win program for the United States and its development partners, including, of course, the Philippines. These are interesting times, and there are many things to accomplish. The far-reaching ill effects of the pandemic compel us to reinvigorate our economies in a spirit of sustained cooperation and collaboration. We must use public and private resources effectively to encourage the expansion of trade, investment, technology transfers, all to accelerate our development. Despite the challenges of the pandemic and the global economic crisis, the Philippines remains on track to graduate to upper middle income country status by next year. With steady investments in infrastructure, agriculture, food security, public health, education, and other so social services, we seek to become a high income country with zero extreme poverty by the year 2040.